Good evening. When we left you last night, we just brought you excerpts from Carol Lennig and Philip Rucker's new book documenting fears the former president might try to launch or inspire a coup. Well, it took 44 presidents of all political stripes and temperaments, good ones and bad, until this president today became the first uh, former president ever to deny such a thing, to deny planning to launch a coup. And even as he issued that unprecedented unprecedented denial, even as book after book with page after page of chilling revelations come out, top Republicans were today showing that they still cannot quit him. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy called on him today at his New Jersey golf club. This Kevin McCarthy. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. That was a week after the insurrection. Days later, of course, he walked it back and trying to down, and flying down to Mar-a-Lago to show his loyalty, not to the truth, but instead to the man who incited a mob that sent him fleeing for his life and begging that same man that day to call off the rioters. Quoting from a newly released excerpt from Letting, uh, Letting and Rucker's uh, book, quote, Kevin McCarthy, who had been trying to reach Trump at the White House, finally succeeded and asked him to publicly and forcefully call off the rioters. Trump falsely claimed that the attackers were members of Antifa. McCarthy told the president that, in fact, they were his own supporters. Other advisors who were away from the White House tried to call Trump, but he didn't answer. They figured he knew what they were going to say, and he didn't want to hear it. Plus, he was busy watching TV. He was watching the fire that he started burn. That's who Kevin McCarthy made a pilgrimage to again today. He can't quit him because he's scared of him, scared that the former president might turn on him that he could lose his power in Congress. It is the most craven type of politics imaginable, but perhaps not surprising. Compromise everything, even yourself, just to hold on to power. And it says a lot about where the Republican Party is today. And after kissing the former president's ring, Congressman McCarthy reportedly headed to the White House for dinner with President Biden and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. One wonders what kind of small talk he might make with her. Will they perhaps talk about the details from the Rucker and Lennox book in which the former president is said to have called Merkel, quote, that bitch Merkel, and said, quote, I know the effing crowds, or using the ethnic slur again, quote, I was raised by the biggest crowd of them all, speaking about his father. Which is odd, that last bit, considering that over the years, citizen Trump sometimes denied his German heritage, saying instead the family was Swedish. And so it goes. Joining us now is CNN Jim Acosta, also CNN political analyst Carl Bernstein, author along with Bob Woodward, of course, of The Final Day is the definitive account of the end of the Nixon administration. So, Jim, what are you learning about this meeting between Trump and McCarthy and then the, the dinner uh, with the Biden and the Chancellor Merkel? Well, Anderson, I was just able to confirm in the last several minutes uh, that Kevin McCarthy is at the White House having dinner. Uh, with President Biden and Chancellor Merkel. Uh, but earlier in the day, as you said, uh, he, he made the trip up to Bedminster uh, to kiss the ring of the once dictator in exile, now dictator trying to make a comeback, uh, the former president, Donald Trump. Uh, according to our sources, what was discussed at the meeting was fundraising and looking ahead uh, to the 2022 midterms. Uh, but Anderson, obviously, you know, one of the uh, subcontexts in all of this is that they need uh, Donald Trump's fundraising prowess uh, heading into the midterms. And, and what is one thing that Kevin McCarthy prizes above all else? That is becoming Speaker of the House. And so he has set aside what he said after the January 6th insurrection, that Donald Trump bears responsibility for it because to what the Constitution uh, was going through at that. Now, as for the White House this evening, I'm not too sure. It might be something along the lines of uh, McCarthy passed the bread and, and perhaps the January 6th commission too. Carl, what, what does this say that the day after we learned about all these new details of General Milley being concerned about a potential coup from the then president and his allies, Kevin McCarthy goes to Bedminster, uh, as you know, as we said, to kiss the ring and show his loyalty? It says what we've known all along, that the Republican Party today is beholden to Donald Trump and Trumpism, which the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the military leader of the United States, yesterday and in this book, we have learned that he has compared Trump and Trumpism to Hitler's neo-fascism, to Hitler Hitlerian fascism. This is an astonishing moment. Uh, these books that are coming out now enlarge on the picture of Donald Trump that we've known all along. His derangement, his delusions, his criminality, 
his utter lack of concern or conscience for the Constitution, for the people of the country, only for himself. But what's new here and is so important, the military leader of the United States has compared Trump and his movement to the brown shirts of Hitler's fascism. That's astonishing. Yeah. It, Jim, I mean, these new books, as Carl was saying, I mean, they paint this incredibly chaotic picture of the Trump presidency leading up to the insurrection, fear of an attempted coup by the country's top military officers, no small thing, as, as Carl's saying. Have any congressional Republicans said anything about these new revelations? Or Because it just seems like they're completely paralyzed from speaking out against Trump while he is, of course, the leader of their party. Yeah, Anderson, I think most congressional Republicans are treating these books like Trump tweets. So they haven't read them yet, or they're going to claim that they haven't read them yet. Uh, but the authors of these books uh, have done, uh, in the Woodward and Bernstein tradition, of going around and talking to sources who were in the know at the time, who were there when all of this was unfolding. And I'll tell you, Anderson, a lot of what is being reported in these new books uh, it aligns and matches with uh, with what we were reporting at the time. I talked to a Trump advisor earlier today to go over some of this. Uh, this advisor said, yes, Trump was this out of control at the time of the January 6th insurrection, between the November election and the insurrection, as a matter of fact. And I asked this source, did, was Trump trying to do just about everything under the sun in order to hold on to power? And this source said, yes. And as for all of this Hitler talk, Anderson, I even went back to this source and said, what is the deal with this Hitler talk, and the source responded to me, well, Trump did like to use the term blitzkrieg. Uh, Anderson, I think there is no doubt in anybody's mind at this point who is dealing with reality that Donald Trump was totally out of control and acting like a dictator who was willing to burn the Constitution to stay in power. And I think the, the, the burning question down for this country, and perhaps Carl may agree with me, is what should be done about it. It appears to me, in a very Nixonian fashion, that crimes were committed heading into the January 6th insurrection. Well, Carl, I mean, you know, obviously, as we said, you wrote the final days of Bob Woodward about Nixon's dramatic last days in the White House. When you hear details coming out about the Trump final days, how does it compare, if at all? I think they're quite different, because Richard Nixon was a cogent criminal president of the United States throughout his presidency, and a master at cover-up. But Donald Trump would never be accused of being cogent about anything. Uh, and rather, what these books do is that they enlarge on the picture that we have already known about Donald Trump throughout the four years. This is not about delusional in the, in the final days. He has been delusional, out of control, uh, deranged, according. And again, this I remember the first time I came on the air and said uh, that members of Congress, Senate leaders, are depicting Trump, and this was in the first year of Trump's presidency, depicting Trump as crazy. This was in the first year. So we shouldn't be surprised at these revelations. Rather, they build on what we have known all along about Donald Trump and how unfit he is for the presidency. What's so extraordinary in the difference between the final days of Nixon and the final days of Trump is the Republican Party. That McConnell, McCarthy, they are totally in the thrall of this president who has been uh, shown to be deranged, who, who McConnell himself has described to AIDS as crazy. So, so let's look at the difference, not just the similarities. The Republican Party under Nixon pushed him from office. Senator Barry Goldwater, the 1964 you know, nominee of his party to be president, told Nixon, you must go or you will be convicted in the Senate. We didn't hear Mitch McConnell do that. Yeah. We didn't hear Kevin McCarthy do it. And so we have a Republican Party that is absolutely in lockstep with Trumpism and what General Milley was talking about, which is a terrible, awful, terrifying moment yeah. in American history. Jim, what's also so stunning about this is yeah. Kevin McCarthy's got to know that no matter how much he debases himself, no matter how much he take, bends a knee to and, and, you know, kisses the ring of the former president, even if it, it, he does this every single day um, through the next election, he could still not become Speaker of the House. The, the former president could just decide, you know, on any given day, no, no matter what Kevin McCarthy has done, it's not enough, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut him off at the knees. That's right, Anderson. And, and Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell had a choice when they made up their mind 
uh, minds about Trump after the insurrection that he basically was the, the cause of it, they could have let him remain in exile and not do what they're doing right now. Mitch McConnell, not as much as Kevin McCarthy and uh, some of the other House Republicans are doing. They are breathing life into the ruins, the burning, smoldering ruins of the Trump presidency. And they are putting Trump in a position where he can be a kingmaker for Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans in 2022. That would conceivably, Anderson, tee up a comeback bid for Donald Trump to run for president in 2024. And for people who are throwing their beer cans at the TV screen right now and saying, no way that that's possible, I heard everybody say that in 2016. I think people need to imagine the possibility that this is part of a Trump comeback, uh, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, he could potentially pull it off with the help of these Republicans who had the chance to let him drift off into the ocean, out to sea, and never to be seen, seen from again. Unfortunately, they did not make that choice, and history will long remember that.